about the Association of Indian Management Schools. It's a 34-year-old networking body of B schools in India, having a membership of about 600 top management institutions. AIMS focuses on professionalization of management education, protects interests of B schools, represents management institutions at national and international forums, financially supports members in academic events, funds research projects on management, disseminates management related knowledge through its annual management education convention, conferences, seminars, round tables and workshops. Organizes free weekly webinars on knowledge sharing and inspiring young leaders sessions for management faculty and students. Supports B schools in admissions through Atma, AIMS test for management admissions. Visit https atmaaims.com for more details. Publishes a biennial AIMS journal of management. Visit https aimsjournal.com for more details. Circulates a quarterly e-newsletter on AIMS activities. Conducts workshops on case writing. Encourages AIMS members to be part of decision-making processes as members of chapter management committees and the executive board. Encourages students' participation in free weekly quiz competitions by providing support to interested institutions. Facilitates networking and interaction among B schools. Why would you like to remain a non-member of AIMS? Pay a very low one-time membership fee and enjoy many lifetime benefits. Visit httpsaims.org.in for more details. Good afternoon to everyone. I welcome everyone on behalf of Association of Indian Management Schools to this session of knowledge sharing. So to introduce myself uh, to the, all the participants, myself Sarat Saikia and I am presently working as an operations manager in Cutter Aluminium Limited known as Cutlum. So basically I am an electrical engineer and then I've started working with Beranto Aluminium Limited. I work with Balco, Bharat Aluminium Company and then Hindalco Industries Limited before I moved to Qatar. So I'm working in these organizations for the last 12 years, and I very recently I've been promoted to this uh, new role of operations managers and where I'm leading a team of 150 people. About today's sessions, we are going to have uh, the storytelling, the power tool for business leaders. And we have with us Dr. Uh, sir Pradeep Yubra, sir. Uh, very welcome, sir, to this session. And we are all are excited, and it's such an interesting session that going to be ahead. And to tell you about storytelling, you know, today, before this meeting, so I'm still joining from plant, I'm at work, it's uh, 12.30 in Qatar. Uh, so before coming to this meeting, we have a new uh, safety manager that joined in the, in the organizations. And we, as it is an operational environment, we worked, uh, is a three shifts, three period of uh, every eight hours, the people skip changes. So the safety manager decided to introduce himself uh, on the pre-start meeting of the teams. And he's, they got 10 to 15 minutes time that all the ships uh, do the pre-start meetings before they start their works. And the safety manager, you know, I saw him that he went there, there was no presentations, no thing. He went straight and he tell a good story about his previous ones and uh, what's the message, safety message to the organization, to the team. The power of this one is that the employees, all the, that believes trusted on him that yes, he's the right leader for this safety role. You know, that the way that he expresses the emotions that was you know, during his expressions was fantastic. And that's what's the power of this storytelling. And uh, it's said that people don't care about you, how much you know, until they know that you care about them. And that's where this power of storytelling can do it effortlessly. It uh, build a trust, it gives the confidence among the employees to believe on you. It motivates your team. So there are many benefits of storytelling can, that is used by the leaders in today's business environment. So to introduce Pradeep sir to the, uh, all the participants, I am not sure sir from where I start about you. It's the time will be short to tell everything about you in this. <laughs> 
So he is an electronics engineer from Pune University, and he holds an uh, MBA from Symbiosis Pune. He is also an executive program alumnus from ISB Hyderabad. And uh, Pradeep sir want to introduce himself as Jack of many trades and master of fun. And that's how he want to describe in short about himself. He have 18 years of entrepreneurial experiences, 7.5 years of corporate experience, and more than 9,500 hours of coaching and teaching experiences. So presently, he is the managing director in Prejan team, one of the India's handful pure play presentation strategy and design teams. The company works with startups and diverse organizations from across the globe to achieve their goals better by using the power of storytelling and presentation strategy. And I have seen your website, I think you have served more than 750 certified clients all around the globe, including Antarctica. Uh, prior to present team, he has been involved with six other ventures, out of which three failed. Two, he exited semi-profitably, and one has been put into hibernation. Before turning entrepreneur, he worked 7.5 years with Three of the largest world or three of the largest companies in the world. These are ExxonMobil, Sale Petroleum, and Total SA, handling business development in multiple geographies. So he has a lot of experiences both in corporate and entrepreneurs as well. And he has more than 9,500 hours of posting and teaching experiences. And I think he is a visiting professor at multiple universities in Tamil Nadu currently, as well as he's a facilitator at multiple startup incubators. He have clocked, yes, 9,500 hours in training on storytelling, communication skill, presentation skill, and creative thinking. So it will be very interesting. We all are thrilled, sir, for the next 40 to 45 minutes that uh, we will hear from you about the storytelling. And we are all very excited for this. So before handing over to you this session, sir, I will just uh, give some ground rules for this meeting. And all participants will not be able to unmute themselves. So after your the speaker session, the participants will get time to put their questions uh, in the chat box. And after that, we will try to clarify all the questions with Pradeep sir. Of course, it will be not possible to cover all the questions, but we will try our best to cover as much as possible that we can. And also this session is very, is live streaming on YouTube. Those who are not able to participate can go through the live streaming sessions in the YouTube later as well. So it's over to you, sir, and we are all waiting eagerly for your. Thank you, thank you, sir. You were talking about some person. Where is that person? Who is that person? Uh, <laughs> uh, too long, too long a profile. So please, everyone, ignore all that stuff, right? Uh, my name is Pradeep Yuvraj. I'm a storyteller. Period. Thank you so much, Sharad, and uh, glad that you're joining us from Qatar. I hope to meet you uh, very soon in Qatar sometime. Right? So Wonderful. So uh, for everyone else, uh, uh, if you can just put your uh, view on speaker view um, so that you will be able to see both me and the slide uh, in equal shape. Let me put them on spotlight. Wonderful. Yeah. So you can see both my slides uh, and uh, me in full, uh, full, full size or whatever you might call it. Right. Wonderful. And like I requested, please, if all of you can put your videos on, that will be great. Uh, storytelling is all about conversations. And I can't have a conversation with white boxes that read random names. So thank you, Bimal. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Yachna. Thank you, Sujata, for putting your videos on. Don't worry if your background is not great. It's okay. Don't worry if you're not taking a shower. It's perfectly fine. Neither am I. So it's all right. It's perfectly good. Good. So, um, so Sarat, uh, it's 3.7. And from what I heard from you, I can go up till 3.52. Right. So let's get into the session. The agenda given to me and the responsibility given to me, my aims is to talk to you about storytelling and how it is the power tool of leaders. Uh, but we all lead such fast lives. So usually before my sessions, I like to do something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some music. I want you to close your eyes, take deep breaths, forget everything that's troubling you. Okay. Baju mein, um, um, baju ke ghar mein kamla baag gai hai. So I'll put on some music, forget everything that's troubling you and just take deep breaths and relax. Here we go. Yeah. Close your eyes. Give me a thumbs up if you can see. Yes. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear. Just close your eyes and take deep breaths. Forget everything that's troubling you. Just relax. Arna, just close your eyes and take deep breaths and relax. Yes, Arna. 
याली मदद था फरीदा Just relax. Just relax. Forget your targets. Forget your director, dean. Forget everything. ंगली Uh, it's very difficult to understand whether we are headed in the right direction it's very important for us to take a pause and look at where we are headed to and if we are headed right then great if no then it's important to do course correction so uh, today's session i would like it to be a session where you take a pause and step back and look at yourself from my eyes the third more important reason why i play this song is the lyrics that you see on the screen Uh, it reads in Tamil, Agni Kunjandra Kandena, the Angor Katilor Pundirai Vaitem, Pend Taninda the Kard Talal Viratil Kunjandra Mupendra Mundo. What it means, uh, it was written by Mahakavi Bardiyar, one of the greatest poets of uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, he said, ki, I took a spark of fire and I left it deep inside the forest. The next day morning, when I came, the forest was burned down to ashes. That is the power of the Indian youth, is what he said. He had written this poem in the context of the freedom struggle because the young Indians were afraid of the big British Tamrajya or empire, and he said that was you're like a fire, a spark, and a spark always has the power to burn down the entire forest. What is the message for you and me in this? The message is that that spark is nothing but the power of an idea, the idea that is there in your mind. It could be an entrepreneurial idea, it could be an idea to teach your children, it could be an idea to do something with your house. the more you feed that idea with fuel and oxygen the idea has the power to change the world as an entrepreneur i know that the world has constantly been changed day in and day out and made a better place by people who have had ideas and who have passionately followed those ideas so if there's one message i want all of you to take is this that you are the spark and you have the power to change the world all that you need to do is give it fuel and give it oxygen With that, let's get into the uh, session. What I'm going to do today is, in the next forty-two odd minutes, I am going to be talking to you about uh, three things. One, I will talk to you about the importance of perspective. Sirf dekhna kafi nahi hai, nazariya bhi important hai. Tamil mein kuri matru mala, kuri koru mukyam. You know, just looking at things and aims are not important, but perspective is also important. The second thing we will talk about is connecting leadership and storytelling, and where they both connect. And then we will. finally move into storytelling and how each one of you can understand and can become a better storyteller i use the word better because all of us are born storytellers we went to school and then we forgot it right so um, so i will try to help uh, each of us here in this uh, zoom room to become better storytellers and as a action item i will give you a template which you can use in your day to day work to understand whether you are gradually becoming a better storyteller or no that's what we will do right it's a it's a it's a group of all academicians i see so many professors assistant professors i'm a little scared it reminds me of college and uh, sarath uh, you called me dr pradeep uh, in in some way it's right because i i am a phd dropout so uh, like like steve jobs dropped out of his college i also dropped out of phd now i am wondering when i will become that apple but let's let's keep the fingers crossed so let's let's get into action mode um um yachna let me ask this question to you and i can ask you to unmute yeah so yachna when you go to uh, see a movie right what do you do before you decide whether you want to go to see that movie um i may check the review or uh, 
Okay, wonderful. So now you are going to watch a movie for forty five minutes, and uh, what was the review that you saw, uh, Yachna, before you decided that you want to watch the movie, right? So what I will do is I'll take two and a half minutes. I will tell you my life experiences, my life story, and then you guys decide whether you want to sit for the movie, right? If you decide you want to sit for the movie, I have a promise that I want from you. The promise is that hundred percent mentally, physically, emotionally, you will be here with me. Thank you, Samar Pita, for putting your videos on. Wonderful, right? Then, then I get to see whether you're physically there. Otherwise, I don't know whether you're physically there, right? Um, I started my career working for three of the largest companies in the world: Exxon Mobil, Shell, and Total, handling different geographies in India, selling LPG for these companies, both as an industrial salesperson as well as a retail uh, channel salesperson. Somewhere in 2004, I did a big mistake, probably I don't know, of reading a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. and that triggered me to become an entrepreneur so june 2005 i call up my boss one day in the middle of the night saying nitin i am quitting i am going back to coimbatore i am becoming an entrepreneur and i came home uh, and the first thing my mother asked us are you an idiot right who quits a job that gives you a six digit monthly salary uh, at the age of 27 with a company car and a bungalow right so i my mother thought i was an idiot but anyway i became an entrepreneur and i came down Summer Pita, there's very something interesting about the uh, the entrepreneur photo there. What is that? You can unmute. He has a gun or like something, you know. It's kind of shooting something, shooting an idea probably. Oh, he's he's got a cape, uh, like very much like Superman, right? You know why? Because these entrepreneurs, okay, including me, we think we are all like Superman. Except for wearing the underwear over the trousers, everything else is Superman. हम दुनिया को बदल देंगे, we will change the world. With that attitude, we all come and we try to change the world. And I did that. My first venture flopped, and I lost almost seventy lakh rupees of my money, hard-earned money gone down the drain. My first venture failed. Guni, what happens when you fail at the age of twenty-seven? What's the biggest outcome? Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Sorry. Uh, what is the, the biggest outcome when you fail at twenty-seven? At the age of twenty-seven, you fail. What do you think will be the biggest outcome? The uh, biggest opportunity. Yeah, it's learning, and I have scope to you know uh, okay. make it. So the biggest outcome is, कोई तुमको लड़की नहीं देगा, right? People will stop giving you thinking of you as a future groom. So all the all the horoscopes that had gone out from my mother were coming back to my house, saying "return to the sender" because no one wants to give their daughter's hand to someone who's failed, and that's how failure is looked at in India, right? But I was still stupid enough, and I said, "Let me do my second venture," and automatically I got a very fancy designation that most of us would see, which is serial entrepreneur, right? Nowadays, if you look at LinkedIn, there are a lot of people who will have three very common things: TEDx speaker, coach. and then serial entrepreneur right it looks like a fancy tag but the honest truth is this guy failed like most entrepreneurs fail and decided to continue with the entrepreneurial journey don't look at serial entrepreneur as a fancy designation but it's actually a a, a life experience that people have gone through where they have failed and they have decided to move on so anyway i decided with my started my next venture which again did wonderfully bad i failed and i lost 3 million indian rupees 30 lakh rupees and everything that i had earned ever in my life was washed out my third venture was doing pretty well we were india's first financial education company we were on the verge of getting funded but somehow the americans decided that they have to screw with our life the 2008 financial crisis happened and uh, my investors pulled out so i was back to square one and to zero when you face three failures you become like dead pool I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Deadpool. He is a character where who you kind of put hundred bullets into it, he'll still stand up, right? That's what failure does. Fail once, it's very difficult. Fail twice, it's a little lesser difficult. Fail thrice, ah, oh, ah, well, मुझे मार kind of an attitude comes to you. So the the message for you and me and for our students is that it's always great to fail fast before you hit the age of thirty or thirty five or whatever is the optimum age you think you are really energetic. try to do all the things that you wanted to ever do and fail you might fail you may not fail but if you fail you still have the courage and the energy to continue because at my age today at 45 if i try to do something new and i fail then i can't take the hit so as the americans say fail fast a very important thing for all of us to understand uh, as entrepreneurs 
So with that knowledge, I started three more ventures. My fourth venture was a success. I sold to one of my own employees. My fifth venture was a success. I told to one of my own partners. My sixth venture was a bigger success. I sold to a larger company based out of Mangalore and I exited. So I made some decent money, which kind of overcame all the losses I had. By now, I realized that making money is not difficult. What is difficult is making money while trying to do what you love and also changing the world is a little difficult. And that's how I call myself now a survivor entrepreneur who has learned the art of surviving uh, everything that uh, the world can throw. So for the last 14 years, I've been busy with this baby of mine, which I call Presentum. Presentum is one of India's only two or three presentation strategy companies. We work with young startups who are in the pre-series A and series A and help them tell their stories in the form of presentations so that they can go and raise funds from investors. In the last uh, 14 odd years, we have worked with 620 plus startups from across the world. And like Sarat said, including Antarctica. So every single continent where there's a human being, I have a customer. What I'm going to do in the next 40 odd minutes is to use all these experiences, the failures of my customers, my failures, my successes, uh, and how story has played an important role in those things. Because all of my customers are probably leaders in their own way because these are all founders who have started companies, including companies that have been funded by Elon Musk, companies that have been funded by Ratan Tata, companies that have been funded by Narayana Murthy. So these guys are uh, leaders in themselves. So I have seen their lives, I have seen their journeys, and I have taken some lessons which I will share with all of you today. So do we all promise that you will all be here 100% mentally, physically, and emotionally? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Samar Pizza, for the thumbs up. Thank you, Bhavani. I like that name, Bhavani. My daughter's name is Bhavani as well. So thank you, Dr. Bhavani. Wonderful. So let's get into some action. Can all of you grab a sheet of paper and pen first? Wonderful. Yeah. And um, um, Shajia, Karna, Anil, Ananya, Subhashni, Shantanu, Suchi Smita, please put your videos on. We all have a conversation. Let's all have fun. Grace, Manjuri, Neeta. Uh, Lakshmi, Darshana, Shreyas, Siddharth, Akshay, Roswin, Are Deshpande Sahib, camera on Karaki, uh, Swati Jain, Jay Jinendra Swati, Chinmaya and Ramya and Rajiv Kuhar. I am also with you spiritually. Wonderful, Lopendra. Thank you so much. Cool. So if you have a Jaranayi, thank you so much. That sounds like a Tamil name. Correct? Amavailia. Right. Okay. Cool. So please draw what you see on my screen on your sheet of paper. If you've already done this, just ignore it. If you've not done this activity, go ahead and do it. Just draw the outline. No need to draw the uh, uh, color. Just draw the outline. Um, get a mouse for this laptop. Yeah, let me show you. Just, just draw the outline that you see. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, just draw the just draw the outline. Yeah. Cool. If you're done, uh, just show your hands up or something so that I know that you're done. Cool. Yeah, no need to show it to me, Samar Pita, now. Yep. Please go ahead and divide the blue into two equal similar looking parts. Divide the blue into two equal similar looking parts. Blue ko do baalo mein baatiye, dono saman, saman baalo ne chahiye. Done? If you're done, just show it to me, Bimal. If you've done it, show it to me. Yeah, show it to me. Cool. Is this the answer everyone's got? Wonderful. Now, please divide the green into three equal similar looking parts. Connected to this, I need the mouse for this. Yeah, divide the divide the green into three equal similar looking parts. Okay, Suchi Smita seems to have done it. Okay, can you show it to me on the screen? You have a green background as well. Yes, Suchi Smita, you can now unmute and talk to me. Yeah, I tried, but I'm not sure whether okay. I could do it. Is this the answer you got? Yep, yeah. cool, wonderful. Bhavani and Jana Jagannayi and Sindhu. Um, now, please divide the red into four equal similar looking parts. Sindhu, not leave Just put it on chat. The moment you see an eye, you want to ask that question. Not leave Divide the red into four equal similar looking parts. All the parts should look similar and they should be the same as well in size. Ah, Sindhu is from Bangalore. Good. Divide the red into four equal similar looking parts. Yes, uh, Bhavani, you've done it. Show it to me, please. Uh, you will have to remove your virtual background. Okay, Samar Pita, those are three squares and one rectangle. I need all the four to be equal and similar looking. I need all the four to be equal and similar looking. Yes, Shazi, are you done? Uh, Bhavani, look at it. Those are uh, two right angle triangles and two equivalent triangles. Uh, I'll, I'll just show it what Bhavani has done. 
But when you have done what is there on the left, right? Those are two right angle triangles and two equilateral. I need all the four to be equal and similar looking. Mm. Professors of MBA, mm. Jagan Naigi, Adir Parangla, you can see there are three squares and one rectangle. I need all the four to be equal and similar. I need all the four to be equal and similar. And if you look at the, both those images on my screen, they're both wrong, right? Because two of them are similar and the other two are similar. Boneshwari, I can't see. You'll have to get your camera a little closer. Uh, uh, Boneshwari, again, same thing. Three rectangles and one square. I need all the four to be similar. Okay, let's, let's, let's. Uh, no, uh, Amita Agarwal, uh, you can look at it. There are, there are two squares and two squares. I need all the four to be equal and similar looking. Okay, let me give you the answer. And the answer is this. One, one shape, one, two, three, and four. Now, please go ahead and divide. Yes, Samar Pila. Let me unmute you. Yes, Samar Pila. But in this case, one is like almost like a square and the rest of them are. No, no, all the four. Look at them. All the four are L's. All the four are in the shape of L. Yeah. Now, please go ahead and divide the yellow into seven equal similar looking parts. Yellow ko baanti hai, saath baago mein, all the seven equal and similar looking. Divide the yellow into seven equal similar looking parts. Okay, Bhuvneshwari, just keep it that. Yeah, close it, close it, Bhuvneshwari. Close it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Yachana, Samarpita, Bhavani, Shajia, stop. Okay. If I'd asked this question to my five uh, nephew who's in fifth grade, he would have said, Are Mama, what easy question you're asking? How do you divide a square into seven parts? You just draw six. And all of us MBA professors, we are struggling to do what a fifth standard student could do. Shame, shame, puppy, shame. You agree, right? You agree that we were not able to do what a fifth standard student could do. And I say we because I was not able to do it myself as well. The question is, why? Can you put it on chat? Why is it that all of us educated people were not able to do something that a fifth standard student could have done? Except for probably, I think, someone, Jagan Nai or someone did that, yeah. Or Bhuneshwari did it, yeah. We overthink, wonderful. Road thinking, okay. Complex thought process, wonderful. So, <clears throat> we seem to find problems everywhere. Yeah, cliche perception, limited out of the box. We stay on the same idea and stuck to the same way. Wonderful. There are three important lessons that I would take out of this. And those three lessons are kind of the foundation for you to become a storyteller. Lesson number one is this ability to look at things and do it in a simple way. We are always trained to think that if you are complex, then the world will appreciate you. If you are simple, the world will not appreciate you. Somehow we've, we've got it into our mind. I don't know whether it was in school or college or where, but we got that. If someone hi-fi language, then people think, ah, wonderful. But someone speaks in very simple uh, Dehati language and makes you understand, they don't, they don't like you. That's what we think. But the truth is, time and again, the world has been ruled by people who have made things simple for everyone else and who have simplified stuff. Like, for example, I'm right now uh, carrying this presentation remote. My, my PowerPoint actually is 10 feet away from me in my room. And this guy made my life simple by inventing this remote. So I paid, you know, almost 18,000 rupees for this remote the first time I bought it because he made my life simple. Lesson number two, the 360 degree perspective. Can you hold the sheet that you drew in front of your face and just rotate it 90 degree anti-clockwise? Just rotate it, the, the drawing that you drew right now. Just rotate it 90 degree anti-clockwise. I've done it on my screen. If you ignore the yellow, can you see the answer to the third problem right there in front of you, the four L's? 99% of the times, the answers to our solutions are right there in our hands. But because we look at it like a horse with its blinds in one track, we are not able to find those answers. So it's important for a storyteller to look at things from all the perspective. And finally, all of us assumed something. What? That the previous problem was difficult. So the next one will be even more difficult. Assumption is nothing but making an ass out of you and me. And you know how much I paid to learn this lesson? 70 lakh rupees, 7 million Indian rupees to learn that assumption is not a great thing. My first business venture failed because I started my company without even doing a market survey and understanding whether people will buy the product that I was selling. I was making race bikes and I thought that every rich guy in Coimbatore, the, uh, the college students, they will come to me running because I have given them a race bike. After nine months, I sold, you know, how many bikes? Zero. Because I assumed there was a market for my product. Stop assuming, find the facts and go in and solve them. So with these three simple platforms, let's now get into the second part of today's session of why leadership and storytelling matters. 
you are all teachers and professors, so I will not talk to you about what is leadership, define leadership, and all that stuff. But what I will talk to you is about the context of why we are talking about this today. Um, and I would like to refer to the lines that uh, Daniel Pink said in his book, A Whole New Mind. The future belongs to a different kind of a person, a person who is a designer, who is a teacher, who is an inventor, who is a creator, who is a right brain thinker, and who is a storyteller. He wrote this in the context of all the jobs that were left brain moving away from America to all the smaller countries like India, Vietnam, Pakistan. And today, these same lines are relevant for you and me because with AI, all our left brain jobs will be taken away by machines and robots. And if you want to survive in the next coming era, we have to be right brain thinkers. We have to be creative leaders. We have to be storytellers. We have to be teachers because that machines cannot do. And with that context, uh, as to why in today's context, right brain thinking is so important, let's get into what does a leader really want? Okay, let's say uh, Shazia is a leader and uh, she has a large team. Okay, let's let's ask Ms. Khan. Salam, salam alaikum, Ms. Khan. You can mute, unmute. Yes, alaikum. Where are you joining us from? Yeah, again. Where are you joining us from? Mumbai. Mumbai, wonderful. So uh, let, let me assume that you have a team of five, ten people who work with you mm -hmm. who report to you, right? Okay. So I, I don't like to use the word under me, so I will use work with you, right? Super. So when, when Shazia is talking to her team, what does she really want? She wants them to first take notice. Why? Because in today's world, there is so much distraction. Either WhatsApp chal raha hai, or Netflix chal raha hai, or something else is distracting. There are hundreds and thousands of things running in everyone's mind. And there's so much of clutter and there is so much of, you know, books and knowledge that they have to go. So the first thing that Shazia wants is as a leader is for people to take notice. The next thing that Shazia wants is for them to understand what is her vision. How will they understand what is her vision? When she explains, explains, explains it to them in a way that relates to them, right? Because understanding today is a very subjective thing. I think that everyone knows Steve Jobs. I was shocked a week ago when I did a session for 100 doctors in person in Chennai and 93 of them did not know who Steve Jobs is. And these are all doctors who are age 40, 45. So understanding is a very important aspect that the leader wants his or her team to do. The third thing that the leader wants for them to do is to be inspired. Okay, I want to follow Shazia. I want to you know work with her. I want to do the same things that she's doing. I want to help her achieve her dreams. Then what does Shazia want? She wants them to emotionally care about it. Because only when you care about something, will you act upon it. Which is the next step that Shazia wants. He wants she wants the team to act upon whatever she's saying. Let's say we want to build a, we want to repaint the college building. Can be the vision for you. You want them to pick up paint brushes and go and get stuff and do, rather than telling, waiting for Shazia to say, okay, go buy paint. That's what you want people to do. You want them to act. And finally, what do you want to do? You want to eliminate complexity. Why? Because in a team of 10 people, you want to cater to the lowest common denominator. Sabko harchi samasta nahi hai. So I want to be speaking in such a way that even the person with the least knowledge or skill sets or understanding understands what I say. Many a times we all cater to the top cream. We don't cater to the lowest one. Because then if I have lost one person in my team who has not understood what I want, I have lost the batch. So I want to remove and eliminate complexity from whatever I do. And for all these things, my dear friends, is what we need storytelling, right? So storytelling matters is the third part of what we're going to try to do. Uh, <clears throat> why do we need stories? Uh, how many of you know what is the theory of relativity? Just give me a show of hands. At least you have heard of theory of relativity, right? Cool. So I have this friend Mohan who's working on theory of relativity with ISRO in, uh, in Trivandrum. Uh, Mohan is from Palakkad, and uh, I want to talk to you today about theory of relativity and how it relates to storytelling. But before that, something very interesting happened with Mohan exactly a year ago, and I said, let me let me use this uh, opportunity to talk about Mohan. So Mohan is from Palakkad, Kerala. Uh, Mohan uh, in last uh, August won a lottery, which is the Kerala State Onam Lottery. The lottery was a crore, and uh, the moment you get a lot of unearned money, what do you do? You don't save. You want to spend it. Mohan always wanted to go to Las Vegas. And so he took the next ticket to Las Vegas. And he went to Las Vegas. 
He was playing roulette, Russian roulette in a casino there because he wanted to try to make more money. He had already won around 10 lakh rupees. And there's this beautiful girl who comes to him and says, hey, you look very interesting. Can I buy you a drink? Shreyas, you have a crore in your pocket and there's a beautiful girl who gives you a drink for free. What do we do, Shreyas? Now he's regretting why he put the video on. <laughs> Shreyas, you can't hide from me now. <laughs> Okay, let's let's ask Sindhu because it's a Manlu story. So let's ask Sindhu. Sindhu, someone someone has a crore in his or her pocket and someone offers a free drink. What what does that someone do? What should that someone do? I can suddenly think of. <laughs> okay, so you take the drink, right? Pocket mein hai, you take the drink. Free mein hai, right? So one drink led to two, two to three, and three to four, and um, four to five. And the next Mohan knows is that he's lying in an old godown in some rundown bathtub with lots of blood around him. And he's wondering, what's going on? I was having fun in the casino. I was having free alcohol. And where am I lying here? So he calls up 911 and he says, ma'am, I'm from uh, India Palakkad. And uh, you know, this is what has happened. I don't know what's happening. I am in a lot of pain. Can you tell me what's happening? So she says, sir, can you please put your uh, hands behind your back? And tell me what you can feel. So he puts his hand behind the back and he says, ma'am, there's some, some kind of a rubber tube there. So the operator says, uh, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, your kidney has been stolen. This has been happening recently in our city. Uh, we have a large uh, waiting list for organ donors. And uh, uh, gullible people like you are being kidnapped and uh, their kidneys being stolen. But don't worry. Uh, we'll send you medicos. It's not, a, it's not a situation where you will die. We will save you and then we will take you back to India. So Mohan got saved and... He was taken back to India. So, um, very interesting, interesting story as to what can happen to Indians when we go abroad, right? But the reason why I want to talk about Mohan was because of the theory of relativity uh, on which he's working. So, the theory of relativity usually encompasses two interrelated theories, it introduces concepts including four-dimensional space-time as a unified entity of space and time, relativity of simultaneity, kinematic and gravitational time dilation, and length contraction. In the field of physics, relativity improved the science of elementary particles and their fundamental interactions along with ushering in the nuclear age. Um, Bimal. Yeah, you can unmute Bimal. Yes, Bimal, can you tell me the theory of relativity, please? What? Can you tell me the, can you repeat the theory of relativity for me? No, I don't know. I have not passed idea about this. Okay. Can you tell me what happened to my friend Mohan? Uh, uh, he, he is kidnapped and uh, his uh, kidney is uh, stolen from him. Uh, oh. He is a gullible, gullible man. He lost his things. So how is it that Bimal is able to remember something that I said five minutes ago, but he's not able to remember something that I just said? And that is the reason, my dear friends, why we need stories. Because you want people to remember what you said. Uh, for them to remember whatever you said, because they don't they don't take decisions immediately. They want to understand it. They want to feel emotionally. They want to care. The moment I said Mohan's kidney was stolen, Yachna and Samarpita had kind of a reaction as if unka khud ka dost ka kidney chori ho gaya, right? Because then you start caring about it, and that is the power of stories, and that is why leaders need storytelling. As my friend Jeff Bezos said, uh, you can have the best technology, the best business, but without storytelling, all that is useless. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you some components of great stories, how each of you as a professor can build in stories and achieve certain objectives, which I will explain to you through the, uh, through the structure of a framework that we will come to the last. Number one, stories take complex things and make them very simple, right? What do stories do? They take something very complex and make it simple. Mohan's story of kidnapping, very simple. Everyone can understand. Theory of relativity, you have to be a physics professor, you have to know English, and still maybe you might not understand. Steve Jobs was one of the greatest proponents of simplicity. So the first time when he launched the uh, iPod, he didn't go to the stage and say that it has 4 megahertz of uh, 4 gigahertz of storage, 8 gigahertz of RAM, uh, an aluminum body that could uh, withstand uh, temperature up to 1900 degrees. No. What he said is, ladies and gentlemen, today I bring to you a device that will let you carry a thousand songs in your pocket. Simple and sweet. That's all we wanted, right? That what can it do for me is what I wanted to know. And that's how Steve Jobs did. In fact, there's something called as the flesh kinkade test for readability, which defines as to 
a document what level of readability is it is it for fifth grade sixth grade seventh grade all of us all of steve jobs speeches were of level sixth grade a great entrepreneur a great company owner like him always understood the importance of simplicity and he simplified whatever he spoke number 2 stories take something that's abstract and convert them into concrete can um, can anyone um, um, tell me what what is abstract and what is concrete put it on chat thank you pranada very nice informative presentation story abhi to khatam nahi hua bhai picture chalu hai abhi what what do you think what define the word abstract and concrete what have you understood yeah yeah what do you understand by concrete and abstract which cannot be touched felt wonderful samarth pita abstract is basic information wonderful cool so let me let me explain to you in a simple way um every box of popcorn that you have in the cinema theater has 3.5 mg of trans fat trans fat is very very bad for your heart and you could get a heart attack very soon if you have too much of trans fat now what will happen the next time you go to the cinema theater and buy popcorn will any of you stop from buying popcorn absolutely no abhi to pradeep ne bola hai ganda hai i will eat more so you'll take two boxes right wonderful what if i tell you that every box of popcorn has the same amount of bad oil as much as in six samosas 1 kg of deep fried chili chicken half a kilo of jalebi and one big box of french fries whatever is the bad oil in all these things is the amount of bad oil in one single box of popcorn now tell me when you go to the theater what will happen you will still buy popcorn but you will pause for a minute and you will see all these things six samosas and one chili chicken and one french fry and whatever whatever kind of right Uh, I am doubtful anyone will be uh, mindful of eating bawani. I am not sure. In fact, people end up buying more popcorn when they know it's dangerous. So what did I do? I took an abstract concept called three point five milligrams of trans fat and converted it into concrete, which is all these six things. So when I tell you three point five milligrams of trans fat, can you imagine something? You can't. Like someone said, right? It is. Uh, uh, it is. It is vague. uh it is not measurable um it cannot be touched felt so if i can close my eyes and see then it is concrete if i cannot close my eyes and see it it is abstract all the technological terms that we speak theory of relativity close your eyes kya dikhta hai kuch nahi dikhta hai but think of mohan for some of you mohan was tall dark small handsome whatever right you could see him so when we speak in concrete language people are able to understand and remember what we said when i say gravity all of us remember one joker who was sitting below a tree when the apple was falling on him we don't remember theory of relativity is equal to 9.8 meters per second square because 9.8 meters per second square is abstract i can't touch it i can't feel it i can't see it but i can see newton sitting below a tree stories take facts and convert them into emotions why because as human beings and like uh, dan erily said in his wonderful book predictably irrational irrational we all think that we think with our brain but we actually think with our hearts we are very irrational as human beings we are not rational at all we think we are rational so we are driven more by emotions than by uh, knowledge and facts 65700 indian women die every year because of cervical cancer the only cancer that has a vaccine the only cancer that has a vaccine still there are 65700 people women who die every year of cervical cancer after you heard this how many of you wanted to quit your mba job and go and do some biotech research and solve this problem you felt bad but not really bad to go and do something about it what if i tell you that every single 8 minutes one indian woman every 8 minutes one indian woman dies of cervical cancer the only cancer that has a vaccine the only cancer that can be easily treated if detected but yet every 8 minutes one indian woman dies of cervical cancer now tell me in the second scenario did you feel a little more bad yeah but if you are good at mathematics you will know that 60 divided by 8 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 365 is equal to 65700 so it was the same data point i gave you 
65,700 per year is equal to one every eight minutes. So why were you more caring in the second instant? It was because I used a very specific word said one Indian woman. The moment I said one Indian woman, something flashed in your mind. It could be your mother, sister, neighbor, colleague, uh, friend, whatever. And how is your relationship with that one person? Emotional. So now you start caring. Are meri maa ko aisa ho gaya to kya hoga? Are what happens if my colleague gets this? Now you start worrying because you are now emotionally connected. 65,700 Okay, big number. But I don't have any relation with them. I don't have any emotions with them. So why should I worry? I will not worry. Right? Predictably, irrational we human beings are. Stories take knowledge and convert them into meaning. What is what is the what is the definition of the word meaning? Come on. What is the definition of the word meaning? What is the definition of the word meaning? Making sense, sensible information, simple and clear. Wonderful. Uh, I'll explain to you in this way. So this is the graph that I was taken and shown to the CEO of a company after checking the blood pressure of around 200 employees. Okay. We, we went to the company, took blood pressure, 200 employees, and then we grew this, drew this graph for him and showed it to him. Now tell me, after looking at this graph, let's say, Karuna, you are the, um, okay, Karuna, Karuna Jada, you can unmute. Uh, there's an echo. Karuna, can you speak? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you are the CEO of that company, Karuna, and I show you this graph. What will you do after looking at this graph? What can you do, rather? Maybe, maybe not. You don't, you don't know what to do with it, right? You yeah. like a fancy it's graph, but you can't do it. Now, Karna, compare it to chat. Huh. It is more simple. Nah, so what? To me, try Karna. This is this is uh, somewhere like a uh, compare it to first one. It is simple. Ah, huh. but to me, try Karna. Hey, Bhagwan, try Karna. What will you do after you see this? To take certain decision. Wonderful. So when you look at this graph, Karna says, oh my God, why are so many people in my company having high blood pressure? There's something wrong. Is the supervisor not treating them properly? Is there something wrong in the atmosphere? I should change it. Why? Because, is it because Karna cares about the employees? No, she cares about her profits. More employees with high BP equal to more heart diseases, equal to more health expenses, equal to more insurance premium, equal to lesser profit for the company. We're all business professors, right? Lesser profit, right? The more my expenses, my profits are lesser. So what does Karna do? She acts upon it. So the definition of the word meaning is nothing but isme mera kya hai. What's in it for me? In this graph, there was nothing for Karna. In this graph, there was a message for Karna. And that's what is meaning. When we start answering the question to people as to what's in it for me? Why should I listen to this? Why should I care? Why should I do what you're telling me? Then you start making meaning. Stories also build in credibility. I'm sure all of us have, uh, in some form or the other, got this message saying, today uh, at 3.30 p.m. in Coimbatore railway station, don't go there because ultraviolet rays are going to be harsh and you might get skin cancer, right? Some form, and this has been said by NASA, right? Some form of this message, it could be a Nigerian friend who's sending you this, whatever, right? And sometimes we are tempted to believe these. You know why? Because of the word NASA. Are NASA ne bola hai, right? Who has said? NASA has said, not uh, Yatna or Bhavani, but NASA has said, so I should believe them. Stories help bring in credibility. You believed Mohan's story. Why? Because it was Pradeep's friend Mohan. And then I went into details. The more details I give, the more people start believing that it is true. I said Palakkad, I said Kerala, I said Onam, I said One Crore, Rule, Russian Rule, uh, uh, Las Vegas. The more you give information, the more people will believe that it is credible. And stories help you bring in credibility in the form. Especially if Yachna and I are trying to talk to our employees, if we both say that you all should come on time, they will not listen. But if I say, you know, Ratan Tata, in his life, he has never been late by more than one minute. If you want to be like Ratan Tata, come on time. Credibility comes from referring to other people, referring to other sources when we are not big enough ourselves. So how do we use all these lessons to use stories for our presentations in classrooms. I've, I'll give you a very simple framework. Um, 
यू स्टार्ट ऑफ बाई थ्रोइंग अ चैलेंज विच इज बेसिकली हीरो था हीरोइन थी उनको ये तकलीफ था दैट दिस वॉज द प्रॉब्लम दैट दे हैड देन वॉट यू डू सो इन 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 अ बिजनेस कॉन्टेक्स्ट वॉट इज दैट इट्स नथिंग बट हीरोइन इज माई कस्टमर द कस्टमर हैज गॉट किडनेप द कस्टमर हैज अ प्रॉब्लम इज द हीरोइन देन वॉट एपन्स you revolve you create a story around or a narrative around the whole solution how did the hero come in and solve it right and then what do you want people to do you want them to get a call to action saying that go ahead and do something about it so this is how in a broad structure you can use stories to to kind of weave your uh, narrative you you set the context by putting a problem then you set the context by creating a solution around that problem and then you tell people hey by the way this is the message next time you go to las vegas and there is a beautiful girl who gives you a drink don't take the drink right so with that now let's understand how we can use this in our day to day life saikat has messaged me 5 minutes more saikat it's actually 2 minutes more only it's 350 and i will finish in 2 minutes exactly right so as a leader as a storyteller and my audience what do i want as a leader i want them to take notice as a presenter i want them to pay attention right today i had 100 people on the zoom call each of them half of them not 90% of them not even putting their cameras on so i don't know whether they are giving attention so how do i achieve attention by doing something unexpected who puts a music that puts you to sleep at the start of a workshop what is this guy doing why is he trying to put us to sleep it is 2 3 3 3 after lunch and i want to wake up and this guy is putting on music that will make me sleep right so you do the unexpected to get attention then what do i want as a leader i want people to understand what i am telling as a presenter what do i want i want people to remember what i say how do i do it i do it by making it concrete so when i make it concrete people understand because they are able to close their eyes and they are able to see apple falling on newton and that's equal to gravity as a leader i want to inspire people i want them as a presenter i want them to agree and believe in what i say today this year this month all of us will take a 50% cut in our salaries the ceo says he has to inspire them he has to make them agree and believe how does he do that by making it credible i have taken a 50% cut in my salary and now i am asking all of you to take a 15% cut in your salary what does the leader want he wants people to care what does the presenter want he wants people to find meaning because when people find meaning and then they care they start thinking about doing something about it and how do you find meaning by bringing in emotions in what you say what does a speaker a leader want he wants people to act the the presenter wants people to do after this workshop i want you to go and fill a form let's say how do i do that by telling you everything in the form of a story so if i put all of these things together what do i do i want people to relate to it i want it to be as simple as possible i want to uncomplicate it how do i do it i do it by making it as simple as possible by giving you all chota chota chintu chintu example uh, examples if i put all of these things together this is how they would look if i remove all the main letters this is all they would look if i remove the few letters behind and let's just let the first few letters left what are there u c c e s s can you see a pattern in the monogram here the framework that i want to teach all of you is the framework of success whenever you do a presentation whenever you do a lecture whenever you do a speech draw a box of 3 by 3 and write s u c c e s and say is my speech simple can it be understood by everyone tick mark is there some unexpected element so people will look at me tick mark is there something credible tick mark is there something concrete tick mark is there something emotional tick mark uh, is there something uh, in the form of a story tick mark so even if you can get 3 out of 6 on those things you have started your journey of becoming a storyteller i will share the slide with you which will kind of give you a flow as to what i want from my team how do i use it as a presenter what do i use it as a tool and finally what does it become right and all this if you didn't understand in this 40 minutes you can go and buy a book called made to stick by chip heath and dan heath who wrote about why messages stick and this formula of success was actually given by them and not by me now you have more credibility and you will believe me more and do it more rather than by listening to pradeep yuvraj who someone sitting in some small town called coimbatore in india so as we come to the end of the session i want you to kindly scan this or use this link and uh, 
fill me a feedback form so I understand and learn from what you have gathered because many of you, I didn't see your faces, so I don't know whether I was effective. I don't know whether you understood. So I would like to understand more. So you can use the bit.ly, bit.ly slash FBAIMS. You can give the feedback now or you can give it later on as well. And if you would like to receive a hard copy by post of most of the messages in this uh, session, as well as the slides of the session in the form, I will send it to you. There's also a feedback, uh, attendance feedback that uh, AIMS has put in. Please go ahead and use that as well. My, my form, you can do it later on. Uh, uh, you will have to put your address. My team will post uh, a hard copy, printed copy of all the messages that I gave you uh, in today's session. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. My name is Pradeep Yuraj. My credentials on Instagram and LinkedIn are there on the screen. And I am open for Q&A. Saikant, on time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It was very informative uh, and very nice sessions, introductions. And uh, you can see in the chat box is overwhelmed, sir. Uh, everyone uh, is appraising the session, sir. It was very interesting. And uh, really, I feel honored to be a part of this uh, session today. And it's all the professors from different parts of India, from MBA uh, institutes are joining here. And uh, I feel very honored to be a part of this one, sir. And thank I you. thank uh, Brangsu Sarkar, sir, from Tespo University and AIMS team for uh, giving me the opportunity to moderate these sessions. So I learned a lot, sir. So from these sessions, I came to know, sir, about my safety manager that he introduced himself today. You know, he used all the tools that you were describing. So it's very way one uh, from it is clear that if one goes in a systematic way, it's a very powerful tool that you have described that you to build a trust among the main team, to build a confidence on your, the, at the same time to motivate and the communication is very clear in a storytelling. Once remember very easily because we still can remember our grandfather, grandmothers when used to tell stories, we can still remember those days sitting outside and the story. So it's a very powerful tool, yes sir. But one yeah, interesting uh, there are a couple of questions. Uh, can I answer them? Uh, so Bhavani says when a product or service is new to the market, how do you build a story? So Bhavani, uh, the, the, the key is always humanizing it. At the end of the day, the customer wants to know what is it in it for her. A washing machine can be 5 kgs. A washing machine can run at 1500 RPM. I, my mother doesn't care. Madam, in five minutes, your clothes will be washed and dried. That's all my mother cares about. So that is what a story about. So story is not, you know, just an anecdote or whatever. Story is just trying to make it relatable to the other person by bringing in some elements of, uh, you know, emotion or by bringing in some concreteness. That's all. Yeah. Cool. Any, any other questions or? My presentation was not visible. Okay. I'm surprised. Uh, is, is that the case for everyone? No, it was feasible, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Subramaniam, uh, if you can go and fill in the form that I have put on the on the previous screen, uh, my team will mail you out the deck in the same form. Yep. <clears throat> so this attendance link is there. Uh, I request all the participants to please uh, use the attendance link so that uh, the certificates can be issued to all the participants. Uh, Bhavani, and, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, it is important for the leadership team to work closely with stories because story. stories are the ones that will help people act. And, uh, you know, when you tell people that, okay, let's all take a 50% cut in our salaries, no one is going to listen to you. But when you say that, you know, um, this could help our company achieve so many things this way. And then in five years, all of you can buy a new car, then probably that becomes a story and they're able to relate to the whole thing. So, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a wonderful uh, case study by Harvard uh, uh, University on uh, the power of storytelling for leaders leaders i'll see if i can find the link and i'll send you uh yachna um, even book stories can help like mohan's story was a cooked story it was not it was not a story that uh, that was real it's just that how do you uh, weave it around uh, but the more you make it relatable see one of the reasons why all of you were okay to listen to me today was because of me accepting that i failed three times in my businesses that makes me vulnerable and those are true stories right so then you start saying, okay, hey, I, I think I should listen to this guy because there's something uh, in his story that, that relates to me, right? Wonderful. So if there are more questions, you can always send it to me by uh, by the Google form that I showed. Uh, would love to answer those questions. Um, uh, it's always good to teach professors something. Uh, so uh, I am honored to be here today and listen to all of you. And all. Thank you so much for all of you on those chat messages. I'm sorry I couldn't reply to them, but uh, I'm truly humbled. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
Yes, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we are running. Uh, it's uh, okay. I have one two minutes, so I am going to close the session. So. Before closing, I want to thank you, Pradeep sir, for joining for your valuable time, for joining with us. It was very, really informative, and it was a thrill session. We are all excited, and you have presented so nicely the topic. It's really no words for that, sir. Thank you. And I want thank to thank uh, I want to thank Dr. Ramaswamy Nandagopal, sir, from uh, the President Ames, and. Uh, Mr. The, the, the Professor Subhansu Sekhar Sarkar, sir, Executive Board Member of AIMS, all other board members, AIMS Secretariat, and lastly, all the participants who have joined these sessions and uh, welcomed Pradeep sir so nicely. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so session. much. Thank you. Thank Bye bye. You. Bye bye.